Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing okay and staying safe these days. So I want to go ahead and toss on Windows 11 on this uh, Surface Pro 7 tablet over here. Definitely uh, much more faster than the Surface Go that I uh, reviewed and uh, did a Windows 11 installation on a couple of weeks ago. But I want to go ahead and actually see how it actually performs on this particular tablet here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot, but there's one little glitch I did run into. If you plan to install Windows 11 from scratch, you'll notice that your touchscreen actually does not work. Fortunately, this tablet actually has a number of uh, USB ports on it, usually two of them, whether they're USB-C or just regular A-type uh, USB 3 ports on the side. You'll definitely be able to connect some other devices, such as a keyboard or mouse. So I went ahead and connected a, just a regular mouse over here. This kind of reminds me of getting my Windows 7 installed on the Ryzen hardware techniques. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on install. And you'll see it's asking you for the usual stuff it actually does. I'm just going to go ahead and click on accept, hit custom. I'm going to go ahead and delete all my partitions here. This is actually the previous Windows 10 installation. Obviously, just make sure you have anything backed up before you attempt to do this, otherwise you may lose some data. And off we go once this particular partition is removed. And get this installation going. So I'll go ahead and speed through this particular process, even though this tablet is definitely much more modern, more memory and whatnot. I believe usually uh, the base models begin at eight gigabytes, I believe, um, as opposed to the four gigabytes that uh, the Surface Go's actually do. So this uh, installation shouldn't take too long, but I'll go ahead and speed right through it. All right, looks like the installation of Windows 11 has been completed. I don't think the process took any more than three or four minutes. I believe it did actually uh, reboot maybe twice, but you'll see I really didn't have to speed through much hardly at all. So let's go ahead and see. Unfortunately, yes, the touchscreen is still not working here. We actually did have a little bit more luck on the Surface Go tablet, but not on this one, so we'll go ahead and continue using our mouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on yes here. And of course, select the keyboard layout we'll be using. And go ahead and skip this process here. Now you'll see here, obviously, um, many people have watched uh, me actually do Windows uh, setups on uh, previous videos. I actually don't like to connect to the internet and actually create a Microsoft account. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just create a regular local account. This is a little issue here. You'll see that 
it is actually forcing me to actually create an account um, by forcing me to actually connect to the internet. There's no option of saying uh, down here, I do not have internet, etc., etc. There is a little trick. Uh, it will require you to actually have a working keyboard and mouse, or in this case, in this case, actually just a working keyboard. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm basically going to go ahead and access command prompt by hitting Shift F10, and you'll see this window has appeared. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Task Manager by just typing in this command over here, Task MGR. And you'll see we get this uh, window coming up over here. Usually, uh, you'll actually see this window. So just go ahead and click on the more details. Now you'll see this entire list appearing here below. So I'm going to go ahead and actually kill this particular task down here. Network connection flow. So here we go. You're going to actually see this window is going to change. Kill that task. And let's go ahead and close out our windows here. You'll see immediately this is what we're looking for, and this is what I'm definitely looking for. So let's go ahead and continue with our uh, options here. Obviously, um, you'll definitely need a keyboard for this particular option to work, or you can also just turn on this accessibility option here and actually turn on the on-screen keyboard like I did previously. Let me go ahead and just type in a username here. No password. And this definitely should be it. Go ahead and turn off all these creepy functions over here and click on accept. All right, looks like we've reached the desktop in Windows 11 and you can actually see because I'm actually not connected to the internet, all these icons are actually not loading up because they're basically preloaded but also downloaded from the internet to actually get going. Now I'm expecting to actually have very similar goofy options here where I, when I click on certain items, uh, the, the task manager will probably just goof off. But it doesn't seem like it's actually occurring at this time. Anytime I used to click on the little search bar using the Go tablet, it would basically just restart Windows Explorer task uh, process and it almost looks like it actually crashed. It doesn't seem like it's happening here, but the other drawback is obviously touchscreen is not working, so it looks like we'll need some drivers here. There's definitely available online a little driver kit for this, this particular tablet and other tablets previously for it as well too that will allow this to actually work correctly on the operating system that you're running here. So let me go ahead and get that updated, get some Windows updates installed, everything, drivers downloaded and whatnot, because I can imagine all that stuff is probably not even <laughs> loading up correctly. Um, let's see what happens if I actually open up Edge. Yep, you actually do get this. Looks like the problems are actually responding pretty well so far. I really can't complain. Edge actually popped up literally just in a few moments, just in a, not even a half second right there, as there it really should be and anticipated and expected it should be as well too. Some other programs here, I don't really see anything too important. So for the moment, I'm just going to let it be. Go ahead and just end... Um, Edge over here and get the drivers and everything else up late, updated and uploaded. Let me go ahead and get everything updated and uploaded on here. And once done, I'll go ahead and give you guys the ins and outs of the entire tablet and how everything's working out. So updates and whatnot have been completed and processed. There was actually a number of firmware updates that seem needing to be processed as well too. But the device is up and running. So here we are. And uh, I have to be honest, uh, I would say probably all the updates after uh, maybe about two or three reboots, maybe took about a little less than an hour. Not so bad, obviously. Uh, I've definitely had some experience of uh, tablets like these before. And I have to say, they definitely do take a long time if uh, they're definitely a little low on memory. Four gigabytes of RAM will only take you so far, and I can just see the updates taking hours and hours doing that. But you can actually see... Um, Looks like it's actually uh, working pretty well here. I'm going to go ahead and just download. Um, let's see here. Just show you actually pretty much everything speeding along pretty well here. Just going to go ahead and download Firefox and, uh, you know, just see it getting installed. You can actually see it's uh, working pretty quickly. So. Looks like it's being installed and you definitely can see pretty speedy and the browser will probably just open up. 
have to say so far everything is actually working pretty well so far on this uh, tablet pretty speedy as I said before and of course here is your main screen here so I'm actually just going to go ahead and try to play a video and see how that works out so I just brought up a video that I actually played before in my uh, Windows 11 installation on the Surface Go tablet right over here and I'm going to go ahead and actually increase the quality to let's say 1440 Still running pretty smoothly. Go ahead and full screen it. You'll see there's really no jitter or stutter. When bouncing between full screen and of course just the regular Windows view over here. Obviously the more power this uh, particular tablet has on the CPU processor and of course memory definitely doesn't hurt whatsoever. This uh, will definitely be working pretty well. And I'm currently using the Firefox browser um, to actually play this video, but it definitely does work pretty well on the Edge browser, whichever you prefer, obviously. There's many browsers out there, and I'm sure you definitely do have your preference when it comes to actually watching or playing videos on any particular source. And you'll see here, obviously, the onboard keyboard is now working. You actually see it just came up here. Bear in mind that when you actually do install Windows on these devices, you'll definitely have to go ahead and activate that little option that allows the keyboard to automatically come on if there's no keyboard connected to this particular device. Now, obviously, that may not include the, the touchpad uh, keyboard um, that you actually can connect to this uh, particular uh, Surface tablet. One little interesting thing here as well, too, is I really can't tell if... Um, I'm going to probably guess that it won't work if you did have the the actual keyboard that's intended and designed for this particular tablet, um, whether or not that will actually work from the start. Uh, as you did notice, uh, I didn't I wasn't able to manipulate the screen whatsoever. Um, so I basically had no on-screen keyboard. I had to actually plug in a mouse and keyboard to actually get things to work, which was uh, you know, a little bit irritating considering that this tablet has been out even before Windows 11 was introduced. So it's a little bit of a, you know, uh, my bad there for Microsoft, unfortunately. Hopefully that's something they can actually, you know, uh, basically get some, uh, integrate some drivers in for their own devices. This is, after all, a Microsoft tablet, not a tablet from another brand like Lenovo or HP or Acer. And uh, those drivers actually really should have just been installed on the fly. So, oh, I'm going to go ahead again and uh, jump over to the full screen here. Picture actually looks absolutely amazing on this tablet, but obviously whatever OS you're using, as long as the screen is fully supported, it definitely will work really well. Of course, one little annoying thing here, obviously, is just the fact that the taskbar, task manager um, option is not available anymore just by right clicking on the bottom of the screen. You literally have to go out and just search for it, but it is what it is. And hopefully, I'll be honest, I really don't know why they made that change. I'm hoping they'll really just implement it right back if anyone it's just another good reason for people and doubters um, for Windows 11 really just having something else to rant about. And absolutely, I give them the full benefit and backing for that one because obviously it's really irritating to have to actually have to do that every time. And you can go ahead and see here that it's actually performing pretty decently. Um, only 30% of the memory being used. So obviously you can definitely have more things running here. I can probably even have two videos playing here. So I'm actually just bringing up another random video over here. Let me just go ahead and see if I can split these uh, windows up. Yep. Looks like I'm just going to go ahead and put one side by side. You'll see they're both actually running side by side without any issue. So not too much of a performance test here, but I just thought I'd go ahead and just demonstrate to you the actual two videos uh, running in the same resolution, 1440 at 60 frames per second, actually running pretty smoothly here. I did actually have this uh, similar experience in Windows 10. And I didn't anticipate the performance actually dropped in Windows 11. I guess, of course, some goofy glitch occurred here. And right now, the battery power is currently at, uh, let's see here, looks like still at 92%. And there should, definitely should be an option to go ahead and actually change that to basically go into some sort of a power saving mode. Of course, here we are, battery saver is on. I'm going to go ahead and actually turn it to... 
just leave it on recommend, I guess, but I can definitely turn it on now. As you can see, now the screen dims out just a little bit, and some more details there will tell you if um, the battery will actually last longer in this case, which it definitely has. This, op turn on, this option has definitely made a difference on these devices. And even though I actually have these two videos playing, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, another browser here. Oops, I'm going to go ahead and just play that again. And you can see here, just go ahead and just click on eBay or something. It's still working pretty well. I'm sure you can actually go ahead and open up something like uh, Microsoft Word or even have a Outlook open, Thunderbird, any other sort of email application you want to actually have. I'm just going to go ahead and open that up as well too. And it's still working pretty well. You can actually see all <laughs> the videos appearing down here as well. I'm not sure why there's a copy of each one, but whatever, that's perfectly fine. One thing I definitely do enjoy doing anytime I get any sort of a Windows-based computer, 10, 11, whatever, is just basically personalize it and turn a few things off and on. So obviously here are your options. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to actually just change the background here. Actually, just see, I'm just changing them just to any old nonsense right now. This content, this particular background comes and reminds me of a, the movie Ex, Ma Ex Machina a little bit <laughs> for some reason. Makes me think one of the drawings that Ava probably made when she was sleeping. But anyway, hope everyone enjoyed this video. Definitely go ahead and let me know if you have any comments or questions regarding this. I def definitely did believe that there wouldn't be any issue installing Windows 11 on this, but. Again, just give you a couple of little pointers. The touchscreen just definitely does not work out of the box. Some drivers need to be installed, so that will definitely be an issue when installing Windows 11 from scratch. If you're actually just gonna do an update, you basically plug in your thumb drive and actually just do an update from Windows 10, I would say you definitely will have more luck and better and more smooth experience, but obviously the techs We'll prefer to actually just do a fresh installation of Windows and here, of course, run into a couple of little challenges here. Keyboard will not work, touchscreen will not work, plug in an external keyboard and mouse or a little combination keyboard and mouse like I have and have used in other videos will definitely make this process much easier. Other than that, that should definitely be the only challenge. Once you are connected to the internet, then just downloading your drivers through Windows Updates. Actually, Windows Update will pretty much take care of the entire thing for you in uh, about you know, two or three reboots. You should definitely be all set. And as you can see, everything is working pretty well. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Shoot a like and subscribe if you found this video enjoyable, found it useful. And uh, as always, thanks again for watching, everyone, and stay safe.